Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hi, everybody. It's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble. As we ramble along this evening here on the east coast of the United States, all the way until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. And we've got a guest with us right now. So let's check in. Ladies and gentlemen, we go out to San Francisco and we talk to the lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. I, I did want to say that we were talking the last show about the uh, Cal Neva Lodge, which was, uh, I think you said Sinatra owned it for a week and a half. But, uh, well, what happened was Sinatra bought uh, Cal Neva Lodge, which was this uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 hotel that sat on the shores of the lake of lake tahoe on the north north shore and uh, uh he bought it and of course the rat pack would play up there and my father would play in the orchestra and uh it was quite a place quite a place uh and he bought it but there's a there's a rule there's a there was a black book they had in uh in Nevada, and the black book was a list of undesirables, uh, that being uh, people associated with uh, organized crime who were not allowed to be in the hotels or stay in any of the hotels with the casinos. Uh, and Frank had a good friend by the name of Sam Giancana, who was the mob boss from Chicago. And, uh, you know, the reason Frank was always nice to these mob guys wasn't that he wanted to be, a, he wanted to be mobbed up, but when he was in, having bad times uh, there in the late uh, 40s uh, and had a hard time getting hired, they hired him. Mm -hmm. You know, they were good to him. And so he was always good to them back, and I understand that, you know. So anyway, Sam Giancana would, uh, came to stay at Cal Neva Lodge, and when the State Gaming Commission got wind of it, they stripped Sinatra of his ownership of Cal Neva. Excuse me, of Cal Neva. And uh, so that's why I say he had it for a week and a half. Uh, <laughs> And so I think Marilyn came up there to visit him a couple of times, from what I read. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And it was a, it was quite the place. You know what happened was in, in Lake Tahoe. People don't know about Lake Tahoe, but just to let you know a little bit about Lake Tahoe, uh, that's where I was married uh, to my current wife. Um, Did not know that. Yeah, we we got married on the shore of Lake Tahoe, um, and, and I kind of like that because you know. Uh, reminded me by growing up, I grew, you know I would spend my summers there in in a little cabin. They had cabins on the Cal Neva property, and that's where they put up the musicians and so on. And so I spent my my summers in Lake Tahoe for many many years. Uh, and the North Shore was it when Frank Sinatra bought in to the North Shore. Uh, it became quite the place, you know. Uh, yeah. And it became the it in place to be, so um, it, it 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 was the in place to be, and uh, uh, it it flourished amazingly. I mean, and then you had the South Shore, which everybody considered crappy because it didn't have the beauty that the North Shore had. It was kind of flat, yeah, a bunch of cheesy motels. Yeah, a bunch of cheesy motels, and. Uh, it, it 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 just it, it, we we always talked about the South Shore like oh and then there's the South Shore, well all of a sudden uh, people decided to start developing the South Shore and Harris went in there and Caesars went in there and everything and the South Shore became the destination, right. and the North Shore dried up, 
I mean, it was really sad. It was almost like you could see tumbleweed floating through it. And all that was happening in, in the North Shore was the development of a lot of very wealthy homes by very wealthy people. Uh, but outside of that, as a, as a gambling destination, you know, it just wasn't. And, and Cal Neva by that time was getting to be kind of seedy and old. And uh, the North Shore just never flourished after that. And I don't think it flourishes to this day. It's, it's always considered kind of the, 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 the cheap place to go. Yeah. yeah, it's just out of the way. Yeah. And um, so, um, uh, I, but I always felt bad about that because I was always taught, hey, the South Shore sucks. You know, when I was a kid, hey, the South Shore sucks. We don't, Dad, let's go down to the South Shore. Nah, you don't want to go down there. <laughs> you don't want to yeah. go down there. Because the North Shore is beautiful. I mean, you've got just right, you're framing in the back of these these uh, hotel, the hotels and so on, is like forest, you know. It's beautiful, yeah. just gorgeous. So anyway, um, that, that that's what happened to the, the North Shore. But the North Shore was was incredible at one point and it was the mecca of the place to go sinatra was there and you know uh he and the rat pack pack played there and it was it was the destination in the north of nevada to go go see the rat pack and a lot of other great performers who had performed there so well, yeah. Lake Tahoe is so, it really is beautiful. And I think you, you always think about the, uh, in Godfather 2, where the uh, Corleone has a big spread there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's over. I know, I can show you the place. If we ever were to drive up there, I can show you that house. Um, that's the house that. that the Kaiser Estate, I think. I, I think something like that. And it's, yeah. it's still there. I mean, it, it you know. Uh, they've kind of hidden it a little more because I think it became too much of a tourist destination and people kept bugging them, you know. But, yeah, but I guess that's huge from what I've read. Yeah, it's a huge, huge uh, piece of land with a huge, uh, I can't say uh, hotel, uh, home there. That's where, in the in Godfather too. that's where the uh, the wedding is, right? That's where the wedding is, and that's where. Uh, oh, no, no, Fredo, no, 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 no! It Fredo isn't. Gets it, shot in the it, boat. it isn't the wedding. It's it's the son's confirmation, or something. It's uh, some religion. No, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, and and then uh, you know where I used to live. Uh, I lived in the uh, uh, down by Houston Street here in what's what's called uh, the uh, the um, um, oh, East Village. And uh, about oh, five blocks, if I walked uh, uh, north, there was a bar there. And that bar has been used for more things in movies than I can name. I, every now and then, that bar is showing up in movies. And um, I just watched something uh, uh, Russian, uh, Russian Doll, on, on Netflix. And the bar is prominent in that show. But you know what else it was prominent in? That's where they choked what's-his-name in The Godfather. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the in Godfather 1. The in Godfather 1, they, they choked him in that, uh, in that bar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I, I have Godfather written all over me. I know where the house is in Tahoe. I know where the bar is in the, uh, in the village. Uh, uh but uh, that bar, and then that bar got used in uh, Luke Cage, another Netflix series, in which that's the bar he works in. So that bar keeps getting used over and over and over again. So does this apartment building I live in. It's in New Jack City. It's in Luke Cage. It's in uh, um, uh, uh, Jungle Fever. Uh, and I could go on and on. Uh, this building's been used a lot, and in fact, we were on the show called Pan Am, and it was a it was a Russian building, <laughs> a building in Russia. <laughs> That's how they how they uh, uh, used it, and uh, so it gets used a lot for movies. So, 
well, you know, they make when, good money when they uh, lease those things out. So. You know, when you remember movies, you know, my earliest remembrance of watching a movie being made was, uh, I'm trying to remember, what's the name of the film? Uh, the one where uh, Humphrey Bogart needs to gets a facelift. I just saw that. It's a great movie. Uh, what's it uh, called? Uh, the Dark Passage. Dark, Dark Passage. That's right. Well, I saw it being filmed. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, it's over on uh, Russian Hill. Is that Russian Hill? No, it's Telegraph Hill. It's the other side of Telegraph Hill. Um, and um, uh, it. it uh, it, it's a street that's right behind. You, you know how you go down. How you go down those. There's an area of San Francisco, folks, where you, if you're going to move furniture, and they got to carry it in. You know those steps that go all the way down from yeah, Telegraph yeah. Hill down to the down to the main street on the bottom. We got all those houses in there, and I can't remember what the name of the area is, and. Uh, Right above it, right above that, is this street, and I'm trying to remember the name of the street, and there is this building, this Art Deco building, beautiful building, uh, that this movie... I don't know that one. Uh, what? Shut up, Echo. Um, <laughs> I didn't even say anything. She says, I didn't know that one. Um, <laughs> anyway, that building is still there. I've shown it to... Marjorie when we were traveling out there and it's just a beautiful beautiful art deco building and in the it, what's funny is in the window of the of the of the apartment that Lauren Bacall lives in in that picture somebody has put a stand up of Humphrey Bogart wow <laughs> yeah but anyway I saw that movie being made I, I remember. I don't know if it was Bogart was there because a lot of times in the in those days when they did outdoor scenes, they used stand-ins. They went up to San Francisco. They did the footage, you know. So I don't know if it was Bogart or not, but I saw them making it, and uh, that was my earliest uh, memory of watching a movie being made. Was Dark Passage with Humphrey Bogart. Uh, and uh, that if anybody ever sees that movie, that building. It's just it's 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 gorgeous. You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah, it's a great. It's like uh, it was one of the first high rises, I think. Here, yeah, and it was in fact Art, art Deco to the extreme, yeah. to the extreme. So, and, and I would I, I, I would I would imagine it's been landmarked by now. You know, it's got to be. It's a beautiful building. It's just uh, it's kind of. It's, it's a great movie. I love the movie. I really. It was just on here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Just, He's in prison, who and fall, he, who falls out of the window? Uh, some the uh, Agnes Moorhead. Agnes Moorhead, right? Agnes Moorhead always got it in those films. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> liked her. <laughs> Nobody liked Agnes Moorhead. Uh, great actress, by the way. This the great character actress. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, you know. Um, uh, it but you was, saw that being made as a kid. Was it like, because watching movies being made is usually kind of boring. But Well, no, but I, I went over there, and I saw them, and all the lights and stuff were set up, and there were some people on the, there's a, there's a stairway that goes up uh, to the upper. There are two roads. There's a bottom road and an upper road. And there's a stairway that goes up to the upper road, and I saw some people standing there acting, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and cameras shooting them. And uh, I went, hey, Dad, Mom, I saw a movie being made, you know. But I didn't realize. I, I knew, and then I found out it was Dark Passage was what they were making. And uh, then I went to see the movie because I wanted to see what I saw. And then uh, all my life, I've, Dark Passage has always stood out to me, you know, uh, as, a, as, as a film that was part of my life. All right? Well, it's not a bad movie. Hmm? Not a bad move. Well, you know, the things you remember, you know, we, we get back to Cal Neva for a while, the, the hotel, Lake Tahoe. Uh, I mean, the, one of my f memories is still to this day, it, it, it's vivid, you know, because I loved my father. My father was wonderful. Um, uh, my mother was kind of a dope, but my father was wise and smart and, you know, I, I loved him, I, you know, and 
I, I don't think I hated him a day in my life and, except when I was 17 and I tried to slug him. Um, but that's part of being 17 is trying to slug your father. Um, but uh, uh, it, it, what I remembered was vividly is sitting at the bar at uh, at uh, at Cal Neva and Frank and Dean and Sammy and the whole rest of the Rat Pack in a in a side room that you could see it was open but it was a side room and they were all laughing and whatever and and my father and I were sitting at the bar and uh, I always remember I guess in that moment I looked over and Sammy Davis Jr was there and he just didn't look like he felt part of the group. You know that kind of feeling you get from somebody when they feel they don't, they're they mm -hmm. in the wrong place? You know, that that was the feeling I always had about Sammy Davis Jr., that he, he didn't quite feel that he was in place. Yeah. Well, the country is still so segregated then. It was just uh, yeah, probably didn't. And it was at that bar. I remember it was a round bar, and and my father and I were sitting at it. And and I tell, I always tell the story. I've told it before. You folks can hear it again uh, about my father saying, "Listen, kid, you know you're 21 now. You can sit at this bar. Why don't you do your old man a favor and have a drink with him?" And I said, "Well, Dad, I don't really drink anymore. I, I used to drink a lot when I was under. I I, I often like to say." I drank more liquor in my uh, before I was 21 than I ever have since. Mm -hmm. You know, because you weren't supposed to. Right. Uh, but I said, I, I don't know much about drinking, Dad. And he, he said, uh, so I said, uh, but I'll be happy to do it. And he says, yeah, you know, then I can you say your old man and you had a drink together. I said, well, he said, what will you have? I said, what are you having? He says, uh, scotch, and, uh, scotch on the rocks. I said, okay, I'll have the same thing. And uh, I know, folks, some of you have heard this story already. And so he says to me, um, uh, uh, or two scotch on the rocks, and they bring the drinks. And my father uh, takes a sip out of his, and he says, well, go ahead. And I take a sip out of mine, and I go, Oh my God! How can you stand this stuff? <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, and "You thought I was having fun all these years." <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that that happened that exact moment. Of Frank Sinatra in the other room, my father and I at the bar. Somehow, that moment in my life, I think if I'm if, when I drop dead, probably my last thought will be that moment at that bar. I don't know why. Maybe it's maybe it's the happiest moment of my life. I don't know. You know, it's a great visual. Uh, oh, it's a it's a it's an absolutely great visual, and it was a great moment in my life. You know. Yeah. Do you do you have any moments like that that you remember that stand out that you kind of like go yeah I'll remember that for the rest of my life. Uh. Let's see, making a perfect landing in my when I was taking when I was flying the glider, so, <laughs> that actually stands out. Really, uh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, what, what was the glider? It was uh, it was a little training glider, and I, I was uh, I just been passed a solo, so I was flying down in Fremont, and it was a really. Wait a minute! You you can fly a glider? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that about you. Oh, I've told you this, yeah. No, you haven't. That was to get over my fear of flying, which made it worse. <laughs> Wait a minute, because I always knew you had a fear of flying, because you, you, yeah. you, you know, I say, come on out to New York, and you go, I, I don't want to get on an airplane. I, I almost blew off my last Letterman show, because I hated flying so much, and a, a couple of comics threatened to beat me up. <laughs> Yeah, but but so you you had the you had the problem of uh, uh, but 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 yet you learned how to fly a glider. I learned how to fly. Yes, I had this. Uh, I always had this fear, but fascination of flying. So I saw they had this little glider poured down in Fremont. So I thought maybe I'll try that, and I did. And uh, I flew for a couple right before stand up. That's what got me out of it. And I flew, and uh, just one day I had a well, just. Wait a minute. It was like getting late, and I had this. I just made an absolutely perfect landing. It was, I barely had to touch 
uh, touched the controls when I came down on final. It was just so perfect. And I just remember the light and landing. I just felt so good. And that was, yeah, that sticks out in my mind like the story of you and your father at Lake Tahoe. You ex- you amaze me, Bubbles. That, that really? absolutely <laughs> fucking amazes me. Really? Yes. Because, uh, you know, to me, I would say that I, it, you know, I mean, if, if, let's say you wanted to take me up in a glider, can two people mm-hmm. be in a glider at the same time? You can, yes. Okay. You want to take me up in a glider. It would probably scare the shit out of me. But getting on an airplane is nothing for me. How mm-hmm. you could, I look at gliders as being far more fragile and far more dangerous than, you know, flying in an airline. All right. Oh, I think they're. I think they just seem. They're pretty. They're really safe, and uh, I think you. I think you would actually like them. You probably. Well, of course, they're, all the glider ports are gone now because they've built up buildings around them. But uh, if you ever get a chance to take a glider flight, I would highly recommend it. Really? Yeah. I did not know that about you. They're so. In fact, they're so safe. You can actually fly a glider younger than you can. You can fly a glider at fourteen. Really? Yeah. And they're just—they're basically planes without engines. Well, I guess you can. The reason you can fly them younger is because they don't—they are not motorized. Good afternoon. Oh, that's my watch. You hear my watch? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a it's one forty-eight. Yeah. But they are. Uh, I remember. One day we were going, they had this thing called a lift, lift condition, that certain cloud formation you get. They were going up, we were going up to, so the pilots had gone up to 20,000 feet that day. They needed oxygen. Really? Yeah, I was, with, I was with my instructor. We went up, we didn't have oxygen, but we went a little over what we were supposed to. And uh, every every minute, say, how many fingers am I holding up? And then I'd check him just to make sure we weren't getting loopy. But, <laughs> But we were actually we were looking down on planes that were flying into SFO. That's how high we were. We were above them. Wow, wow, yeah. that's that's uh, that's incredible. You know, um, I guess something else that I I wouldn't have minded trying uh, was is parachuting. Um, oh, that would scare the hell out of me. Well, it would scare the hell out of you, but why? You know, I mean, um, I I have a fear of heights, okay? Oh, me too. But I don't have a fear of heights when I look outside a plane, an airplane window. Right, right. That's, and, I don't know why, same thing. And I've been told, I've been told, the reason you don't have a fear of heights in an airplane, and you probably wouldn't jumping out of one, is that you don't if you're looking if if you're standing in a building and you're looking down at the ground you see a parallel to the ground from the building you, you get what i'm saying yeah but yeah. when you're in an airplane you have no parallel view to the ground you're just looking at it and it's it's a whole different thing that if you're in a building looking out the window all right so um like here, I live in the, on the eighth floor of a building. I I don't get near the windows, <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, I can't look over the edge of a building. Yeah, yeah, exactly, really and that's the reason why. And so I uh, I never had a I never had a uh, uh, so I often felt that I could I could parachute, and the only thing I would worry about is that the parachute wouldn't open. But once it opened, I think I pretty much have it, you know you know have it have, i'm okay as long as it parachute opens and if and you have a second parachute by the way just in case that yeah. one doesn't open and if that one doesn't open then you're really up shit's creek but you know i've talked to people that have done that and they say when you're free falling you don't have the, you don't feel like you feel like you're floating you don't feel like you're falling right right probably the only time you really feel like you're falling is once the parachute opens up yeah, and you feel the drag, mm-hmm. you know. But I mean, I I often thought I you know, but I of course really? I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it now. You know, I'm too old for that. 
But I, I, if if I were younger, I think I would try jumping out of an airplane. That, well, that, maybe we'll get you into a glider before you can do that. You you still can do gliding? I I can't. I'm I'm no longer current, but we, I'm sure there's a place in New York where you could go for a ride. Now you had to get a license, right? To do had to get a license. Yeah, you yeah. you go for your instructor, and then you get then you have to take a written test, and you you have to be approved to get your license. And, well, so I made it. that far, and then, then stand-up popped up, and I kind of drifted away from gliding. Yeah. Well, folks, if you live long enough, uh, you will hear things about bubbles you never knew before. <laughs> hey, bubs, we've run out of time. We have. Now I want to go for a glider flight. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Let's do it next week, okay? You got it. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin. The Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the program. I'm Alex Bennett. This is The uh, the Ramble, and uh, that was Larry Bubbles Brown, and he's here every week because I love having him on every week. I love talking to the guy. He makes me talk is what he does. He helps me to talk. Uh, so I, I enjoy his company, and uh, uh, we alternate him with uh, Will Durst is on occasionally, and my ex-wife is on occasionally, and uh, also Stephen Pearl, who uh, we shall have on, I guess, uh, next week. Uh, let me see here. Let me open up the Skype lines. Uh, in case you don't know what this show is about, we have a discussion between a whole bunch of people, uh, and uh, those bunch of people are uh, are people who... Uh, call this program, and we don't just talk to one of them. You know, most talk shows, it's one-on-one. -on -one. This is one-on, it's a gangbang is what it is. <laughs> it's one one on a group of people, okay? One on, uh, uh, well, we can, get, we can get upwards to, I don't know uh, how many people we can do now. Supposedly, we can do up to 25, but I wouldn't want to do that. We usually get about, oh, five, six, seven, upwards to 9, 10, um, and we have a, a had upwards to 12, but at that point it gets a little unwieldy. But it makes for great discussion, and it allows people to talk with other people and, uh, and uh, to get to know each other and to discuss their differences and to perhaps argue. Uh, and uh, then, and, and also you have the host, which is me, and uh, I sit here waiting for somebody to call so I don't have to keep uh, doing a tap dance while I'm waiting for somebody to call. Usually they're ready to call immediately as soon as the interview is over with, but, uh, well, here comes Phil Meyer. He, he's the first one in. L lucky, lucky me. Uh, it's, uh, there he is. Phil Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. How are you, Phil? I'm just fine, thanks. Uh, thanks for asking. Okay. So you're uh, you're eager to go uh, fly in a glider? Glider? I wouldn't mind doing a glider. Would you? You know, uh, hang gliding kind of appealed to me. And those turn up your uh, mic. Turn, small turn, turn up your turn up, ultralights. Turn up your mic a little bit. Okay. Not really. not, you, right. you just you're not low. You're just not high enough. Okay. There you uh, go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you okay. go. Right. Good. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, ultralights have always appealed to me. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able just to, you know, touch down on a beach and then take off. And it's um, yeah, but those are motorized, right? Yeah, very yeah. small motor. Yeah. Yeah. But, you but, know, but but what scares me? I mean, why I'm, I'm just amazed at bubs is that the gliding isn't just flying a plane. That's flying a plane with no engine. Yeah, you have yeah. to understand the uh, uh, the updrafts and uh, you know how, how to how to go in the uh, in the in the current of the of the wind. Yeah, uh, and th th I've always had this reoccurring dream, even when I was a kid, mm -hmm. that I could just raise my arms and sort of like the flying nun, just fly. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of people have that. But gliding could be a lot of fun. I yeah. think. I think it could be a lot of fun. Is it just going to be you and me? Usually Charlie's in here by now, and usually Jeff is in here by now, and uh, uh, it's just you and me. Oh, my God. It's mano a mano. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Something is trying to uh, send me um, an email, and I'm trying to close it, and it won't. Um, I don't know. Okay, I got it. 
Got it out of the way. Get any? Get you get? Oh, here we go. Here, here, here's Charlie. I, I, I wonder. Usually, Charlie has been like the first lately. He's well, like, uh, you know, are you the kitty cat? As uh, what's her name said, the uh, Pelosi. Yeah, what? She was uh, calling the uh, Republican scaredy cats. Really? Uh, today. Oh, I didn't oh, hear her no. calling Republican scaredy cats. Uh, I guess just being alone uh, with a Republican. I mean, what, what are they supposedly cat. scaredy cats about? Uh, uh, you know, just the, uh, the the back and forth, the asking Schiff to resign, uh, you know, the, these attacks. you, you got to admit, Schiff really read him a riot act today. He did, and so did a lot of others. I mean, you know, they, they, they said that they had proof, and... Uh, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to well, they always when say, they release the full the they, full. Yeah, they, uh, they always say they have proof, but they don't have proof. No, it's just uh, a, a, an idle. Oh, who doesn't have proof? The Democrats? No, I I, I am looking forward to a release oh, of oh. as much of the report. Well, it's going to be it's going to be interesting because I think it, we could find that the um, attorney general perhaps jumped the gun. Uh, on on, on, his, uh, on what he was doing. Well, well no, 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 hold on a second. Uh, I think we may find that out. I don't know if that's what we will find out, but I think there's a chance that if you've got a 300-page report, as this is reported to be, that it's it's got a little more to it than just a four-page summary. Well, uh, uh, what's his Rosenstein or Rosenstein is planning on retiring as soon as that mm -hmm. report had come out. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, they'll, you know, he'll get subpoenaed, and there'll there'll be some more information. Uh, you know, I don't I don't believe that uh, if there was no collusion, then it's really hard to have obstruction. Well, if there's no, here's what here's what makes no sense at all. But you, well, mm -hmm. Charlie, let you, you say something first, then I'll say. I guess. Well, see, that's a fallacy. You can have you can have obstruction. Say I did not rob a bank. And a grand jury wants to have a, a, a trial or whatever about whether or not I robbed the bank. That doesn't give me the right to impede that trial. It doesn't give me the right to impede that investigation. It, well, just because I'm innocent, I still have to not okay, impede the investigation. But Charlie, uh, when, when the uh, prosecutor says, I can't find any proof that they did or they didn't, yeah, but, maybe but he also can't. added. He also uh, Mueller also added the uh, the the point that he couldn't find the proof that he obstructed justice or, or couldn't prove obstruction of justice. On the other hand, he couldn't exonerate the president either. He Did said he use that the word exonerate. Or I think it was exonerate use... or something similar, very no, I, similar. I, I think he said that he couldn't prove that there was or there wasn't. Uh, no, there was no talk no, of exonerate. No, the exoneration no, stuff. He, no, the he, sa no, he said it doesn't exonerate him either. Just because he didn't prove yeah. that he that he yeah, did doesn't but, prove that he didn't either. But just remember, you're innocent until proven guilty. And uh, well, then, you know, then I I suppose you should tell your president that. Why? Yeah. Uh, because well, all the time he's he's saying that people are guilty when they're not. Yeah. I mean, like, for instance, today, Jesse Smollett. Well, uh, no, Jesse Smollett is uh, your friends from Chicago. My, uh, my friends Rahm from Chicago. Uh, um, he's a friend of mine? I don't uh, know him. Yeah, well, he's, he's a Democrat. Uh, he's, he's asking now for $100,000 uh, for the cost of the uh, yeah. investigation. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, yeah. But so, here, here's what your boy Donald Trump wrote today. FBI and DOJ to review the outrageous Jussie Smollett case in Chicago. It's an embarrassment to our nation. Uh, it is. Uh, the man was um, um, uh, not charged. Their charges were dropped, and I think the charges it's an inside, were, the charges inside were deal dropped. Yes. with Obama's so, so, uh, so, oh, second in command, uh, there, Michelle it, Obama. You're so, absolutely <laughs> wrong about that. You're so wrong about that, Phil. You're yeah. listen. You're listening to those fucking left, right wing talk shows that are passing off this kind of shit. Michelle Obama didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, the Obamas she, she, have no power at all. 
Benghazi. They were friends. Yeah, let's go back to Smollett Benghazi. Okay, Obama. let's go back to Benghazi. I think we could probably flog that for about a week well, and a half. Well, I think once they get that one uh, straightened out, oh, I see. Hillary will be in cuffs. I see. Okay. Oh, yeah, yes. the 51st Jason, time is Jason, time. Jason, mm -hmm. hi. Are you there, Jason? Oh, Jason He's frozen. Froze for... He's frozen, yeah. He's frozen. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. well. It's got... Is there a new Skype or something? Uh, what do you mean? Skype looks different. Skype? It's been acting weird. Um, they must have done something. I have no idea because I don't use the new Skype. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not in a bubble. I'm in a rectangle. Uh, I have three large rectangles, and I can't drag my picture anywhere to figure out what to do with it. Hmm. Well, uh, welcome to the wonderful world of fucking Skype. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah. There we oh, just Jason's lost Jason. He'll now. probably call us right back. Um, no, I mean, uh, you know, but this whole thing—I don't know where you get this whole thing. Michelle Obama was in on the Jussie Smollett release. Uh, yeah, you know, right. I wish right. I'd write these things down. Well, I wish you'd driven. also hear them as they are reported, and and well, and I then hear it as and then reported. also question them. If why, it's, why don't you look it up? Uh, if, I'm uh, sure Michelle you Obama's... heard it. I'm sure you heard it on Michael Savage's show. You got a hard on for Michael? No, Savage. I don't. Have, oh yeah, I do have a hard on for Michael Savage because I know the man. Yeah, and he is a prick. Uh, you know that, that's probably true. He got beat up in uh, in Tiburon. He deserved in a restaurant. it. He deserved it. <laughs> yeah, some guy sucker punched him or something. Oh, I wish more people would. Uh, well, yeah, that's. I, uh, I do not know. condone that statement. No, you it's do it's not condone that statement. I'm not a violent person, so I don't want anybody to get hurt. But if anybody should get hurt, it probably is Michael Savage. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. gee, maybe I'll have anyway. the Mike, the Michael Savage police up here to, you know. Here comes yeah. Josh Wheeler. Uh, haven't seen him this week. Hi, Josh. How you doing? Here, here he comes. Here he comes. There you go. Hey, Josh, maybe you can clear this up for us here. <laughs> what what exactly did Mueller say? He didn't say about, about uh, obstruction of justice. Well, we don't really know yet, but the synopsis I got was that he... he he didn't really say one way or the other, uh, from what I take it. I mean, well, he said I, at one point that this should not be oh, considered. He said this should not be considered exoneration, right? Yep, he did. No, I. Did he speak he did. Today or I something? don't think he used the word exoneration because it, it it's was it up to I, the. I think uh, I I think I heard the word. Exonerate? Did you did you hear the word Charlie exoneration? Yeah, I heard the word. Yeah. exoneration. I, I heard it from the Democrats. And, no, and no, no, like no, 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 no. This was in the over. this was in the four page thing that uh, that uh, uh, asshole wrote. Uh, it was the one yeah. quote. Yeah, one full quote. One full quote because most of the things he was he was putting in there were like partial sentences. They were in whole yeah. chunks of what was being said. So. You know. Did has did Mueller make some public comments? Did I miss? That? No, I don't think he did. No, these were from uh, Barr, I thought. Yeah, okay. but Mueller, Mueller said something to the effect of this should not be considered exoneration. Uh, uh, yeah, that was the, the gist that I got of it. I mean, it was almost like he said, uh, or I took it as maybe, uh, I'd really like to prosecute a case here, but I, I just can't meet you know, the undeniable, you know, burden of proof that the prosecution in this country is usually under in order to basically, you know, to file a charge. And you got to remember, you, know, you got to remember that all the people involved in this, Barr, uh, 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 Mueller, Rosenfeld, are all Republicans. They were all. But yeah. he, Trump kept talking about the Democratic witch hunt. The Democrats had nothing to do with it. They were all Republicans involved in yeah. this witch hunt. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, who's Eddie Jordan? Do we know an Eddie Jordan? Do I know that name? Uh, hello. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let's see if he if he if his phone comes into play here. There he is, and we're there's Eddie Jordan. Have you been on before, Eddie? No, this is the first time. This is the first time. Hi, Eddie. How are you? Good. Where are you calling from? 
Uh, right now I'm in a little village outside of Thailand. You're in Thailand. Boy, you're kind of you're kind of breaking up on us. You're freezing, but uh, oh boy, too bad. I think it's pretty warm in Thailand. What'd you say? Uh, what did you say, uh, uh, Eddie? <laughs> I have a very poor connection, I'm afraid. Yeah, I think you have a poor connection. Um, you might, uh, do you, are you using a, a portable machine or uh, that's movable? Yeah, I'm on a, I'm you, you, might try, you, you might try to move it closer to wherever the Wi-Fi is. Oh, I'm just on a, I'm on a phone line. Oh, you're on a phone line. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Well, now you now your picture anyway. changed. Oh, there we go. Now it's it's much better. Much. I'm outside in the sun now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, well, it's much better if you stand uh, right. If you go back to a little. Yeah, I'm bit standing back. in the middle of the street, so. Oh well, I can't have <laughs> no, you standing in the middle of the street for this. Where again in Thailand? It's a new look. It's in the central part of Thailand. Yeah. I'm uh, here visiting with my my wife and at, at her grandma's house. Oh wow. Wow. Their little farm here. Oh wow! Yeah, down by the river. That's what. I, that's one thing I love about Skype is all the wonderful places we get to go without actually going there. Yeah, yeah. 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 you had to well, pay I've for the to, uh, what? I've listened a long time, and I just I'm sitting around here doing nothing, and I I got the alert that you were on, so I figured I'd I'd call in. Yeah. So you're using a phone line, you say? You're using a phone system? Yeah, I've got my phone, and I'm, I'm uh, hot-spotted to my iPad. Ah, uh, okay. But isn't that going to cost a lot of money in, in foreign uh, use? Well, Skype a, is free. I have a Thai SIM card that I put in when I, when I get into Thailand. Oh, I see. Okay. It's, no, it's it's Skype's like 15 or $20 a month. Phil, Skype is free, but the phone usage isn't. Yeah, yeah it's the data usage, but it's not that bad. Yeah. Yes, and if you use your data in another country, uh, that could cause problems. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're roaming. Yeah, if you're roaming. Yeah. Uh, I'm wait. waiting to see my bill that I'm going to get from the Bahamas. It's all on my SIM card from Thailand. Right. So, uh, oh, there's uh, Jason's back again. Hi, Jason. How's it going? I, like, said one word and my internet went out. Oh, really? Just completely <laughs> yeah. out? And I, like, looked over. I see the green lights flashing, and I'm like, oh, shit. No, oh, wow. Uh, that's uh, AT and T, huh? But we have we we have Eddie down here, uh, who is in uh, Thailand, uh, and uh, gee, now if we got Brita calls from Dubai, that yeah. would be kind of like really international, you know. And then Richard from uh, Norway. Norway, <laughs> yeah, Richard, if you're in Norway, give us a call, right? You know, that's that, that Eddie. What? How long uh, do you stay in Thailand? And is, are you a regular visitor or? Uh, is this just a, a quick trip? I think he's frozen again. Oh, oh boy. I think that's going to be a difficult go there, that uh, uh, that Thailand. Uh, the hot spot? Yeah. 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 It, it's it's not working very well. I think he's he's frozen. Are you there, t are you there uh, uh, Eddie? Can you hear us, Eddie? Now the picture changed. Now it's yeah. changing again. Uh, there we oh, go. There now we can you hear us? Uh, uh, can you hear us, Eddie? <laughs> Eddie, I think we're going to have to kind of terminate the call only because you're chopping up so much that. Uh, yeah, I'm but but uh, if you get get a chance and you get yourself into a place where you know you've got a good signal, please call us. We'd love to talk to you. Okay. Okay, I'll be back in the states in a couple of weeks. Okay, do that. that. Okay. Really, call us when you get back to the states. I'd really we're appreciate back to it. Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'm back to Wi-Fi. Thank you, Eddie, for calling. Bye-bye. Right. Yeah, wow, that was that was kind of nice, you know. Hey, Kevin, it's a shocker. Uh, yeah. Is it working? I'm back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it working, Kevin? Did they turn it on yet, Kevin? Yeah. It's turned on, but we've had some issues. Oh. Uh, now, what we should explain is that Kevin has a bum what? Every, a bum legs. Bum, <laughs> bum legs, and they hurt a lot. They have pain. So they have embedded in his, where is it, your back? 
Yeah, basically my spare tire. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, your spare tire. <laughs> in your back, uh, a uh, 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 electronic device, which they then come, he came over to the house and turned it on, and you had to go down to the doctor's office and have no, it. No, I went out. to the doctor. They, they programmed it on, uh, was it Monday? Yeah. They, and they pro- pulled the staples up. Oh, okay. Now tell me, how are you feeling now that it's working? It, it well, it takes a couple of days to wash in, right? Yeah. So they well, they programmed it with a, some uh, program on Monday, yeah. and you know it was seemed like it was working okay. And then yeah. was it yesterday? I was screaming bloody murder because I was having all kinds of shooting pains in my foot. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, I was you know literally yelling for the guy to call me because they're yeah. supposed to call every day or two and check on it. Mm-hmm. And so we reprogrammed it and it calmed everything down today. So, wow. so far we're, it takes some tweaking. So it's going to take, it could take, yeah. you know, a couple of months. It could take a couple of weeks. Could take a couple of days. Who knows? In case people aren't familiar with this program, this is more like a doctor's waiting room than it is a yeah, citizen panel. <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, 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 Phil lost his prostate. Charlie lost a couple of toes. Uh, and uh, uh, Kevin's got this thing in his back to stop the pain that he has in both his legs. We're, yeah, it's a spinal cord stimulator. Do you have anything wrong with you, Josh? Is there anything defective <laughs> with you? Uh, I mean, other than the drinking and the taking the pills, I'm, I'm pretty good. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, I do that too. And, much other than and, that. J- and Jason, you're too young to have any real problems, right? I, I'm older than Josh, so you're well, old, you're older yeah. than Josh. But Josh, how old so. are you again? Thirty six. Why'd you have to think about that? Because I, I really, honestly, I really can't like, ever remember. It's a stage in your life that you just kind of forget. Like, yeah. I whatever. mean, I really. I mean, <laughs> I, I actually. I mean. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I think it's 36. Again, how old are you drinking? I, I never can remember. And Jason, how old, uh, Jason, how old are you? 38. 38. Okay. Well, I, got I mean, I, I've, worked in, I've worked in the heavy industry for a long time. I mean, in all honesty, uh, my back is pretty bad. I mean, but... Postman chondroitin. I mean, yeah, there's not really any much I can do about it. I mean... Take fucking pills. Glucosamine chondroitin, man, helps out a lot. Get a teeter hangups. Hey, yeah. You could be like me and not listen to people like my age yelling at guys your age saying, slow down. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean. I slow down. You got to go faster. You got to do more. I didn't well, know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything to work myself into uh, disability. I mean, I'm just, it's just the uh, jobs that I've had have required, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, they're pretty physical, and it's just you just get shit done, but you you know you just kind yeah. of pay a price for it. No, well, I know, I know. I drove truck for thirty years, so yeah. Well, I have neuropathy and maybe prostate cancer, but it's the good prostate cancer. I don't have anything. Not yet. <laughs> no, I went to the doctor. He said my blood Here's pressure was good, and my yeah, Well, thank you very much, Tony. We're glad you're the healthy one of the group. But my mother is driving me crazy. Well, Jason, now. Jason, you're, you're healthy, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm healthy. Yeah, I mean, except well, I same thing. I got when I was 38. Sore, I got a sore really bad back. Cool. You know, if it turns out I have the prostate cancer, they give me some hormones or something, and that uh, that com- that takes it uh, just minimizes it completely. So, you know, my age, it's it. There's the there's the uh, good uh, prostate cancer and the bad one. The bad one is what Phil had. Yeah, the, one that, one. the one that the one that you get the one that you get when you're like 79 or 80. Most men at age 80 have prostate cancer of some sort, and uh, they just treat it with the hormones, or they treat they can sometimes they treat it with radiation. But for the most part, it's just wait and look and see and make sure it doesn't get large, doesn't cause a real problem. So uh, because here's here's how they put it, and I love it because it makes me feel so good. They say something else will probably kill you before the prostate cancer will, yeah. and I'm thinking, gee, that's something to look forward to. God, that's good news. <laughs> you know? So anyway, he he said to me, he said, I can. I, he says, if you've got the prostate cancer, the 
you know, the slow one. He said, I can keep you going alive till you're 95. And I said, oh, I was planning on living to 100. And he said, well, that's thinking. That'll you know, cost extra. Yeah, that'll <laughs> cost extra. I said, he said, what makes yeah. you think you're going to live to be 100? I said, my mother lived to be 100. And he said, oh, wow. So I said, you better rethink your plans here, pal. You know, give me the stuff that's going to make me live forever. Anyway. Yeah. See, I, I feel know. so bad there's such a joke in there that they're treating you with hormones. And it's like, you know, are those whores unionized or what? Well, how do you make <laughs> the old joke? How do you make a hormone <laughs> refuse to pay her? You know, ba dum boom. So. Hey, uh, today they said um, no more uh, legalized marijuana in New York, that uh, it's off the ballot or something. They're not going to fund it. They're it like crazy, though, all over the place. You, you just see them walk around and about me. They're not even arrested. Yeah, but uh, Cuomo uh, came out and said he wasn't going to fund uh, fund it. Or I don't uh, know. That. Why don't you get the story straight before you come to us? Because I don't really them. give a shit what Cuomo. Well, says. then why yes, why did you then why did you even bring it up? Have they passed? Uh, right here? No. Uh, all I'm saying is no, be b- before you come Jersey's up with right something, you like, don't know about it. No, I don't you, know you have about six it. Six TVs. You watch them all. I watch the six o'clock program news. on each channel. Was, I watch the six. I watch the. Lo- I watch the local news, and it wasn't on the local news, Phil. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll go look it up. I'll see where it is here because you don't want me to look. It's it up? probably right next to that so article about. You guys Mich- have it's medical, probably, but not right it, It's probably right, right next know. to that article about uh, Michelle Obama. Uh, oh yeah, doing the <laughs> I uh, about that doing one. the Jesse Smollett. <laughs> thing. Yeah, let me let me find. I've got a you know every now and then I like to make Phil happy. Okay, right. because I, uh, huh? Don't we all like to make Phil happy now and then? We don't yeah. hate Phil. We'd like him to be happy. Right? He had a big job this week. I'm very happy. But he comes on this show and it's <laughs> like, you know, it's it's like everybody is assailing him as well they should because he's out of his fucking mind. But but I when I find a story that I think will give Phil great happiness, I'm happy to read it to him. And right. this is one that I have in front Tell of me. Tell me a story. Well, this is one I'm surprised you didn't even pick up. Uh, MSNBC show host Rachel Maddow isn't backing from away from her coverage of President Donald Trump and any connection to Russia's involvement in trying to influence the 2016 presidential campaign. But the question is, how long will her fans want to listen? The story that they wrote in the Associated Press by David Bodner explains Maddow's audience has dipped on her two days back on the air since the uh, Mueller report came out. It'll be short term. Yeah, it says uh, her audience of 2.5 million on Monday was 19% below her average this year, and it went down to 2.3 million on Tuesday. On the other side of the ledger, Bowder writes, Meanwhile, her head-to-head competitor on the Fox News channel, Sean Hannity, saw his audience soar on Monday to 4 million viewers and a 32% increase from his average. It slipped to 3.57 million on Tuesday. He says, Hannity and Maurer have run neck and neck atop the news cable ratings this year with Maddow having a slight edge. So, Phil, you can be very happy. Rachel Maddow, now that the whole Mueller thing is over, appears to have lost her audience. I think it's short-lived. You know, she she based her uh, show, her monologues, were basically uh, that uh, Mueller was going to uh, come out with salacious shit on Trump. And when that didn't happen... Uh, well, no, I, I'm going to tell you what I think. I'll give you a better... I'll, 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 give, I'll give you a better answer as to what happened. Okay. Oh. Uh, because uh, it happened in this very household, okay? Yeah. After the Mueller report came out, my wife and I could not watch MSNBC. And the reason for that is we got the bad news. We didn't want to hear any more about it. We just didn't want to hear the endless hours of them trying to parse the Mueller report. Charlie, you seem to be agreeing. Did you do the same thing? Well, I haven't been able to watch MSNBC for a long time. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, y- yes, uh, Jason. So has Mueller said anything since he's released the report? Uh, no. I think I'm coming nope. home for dinner, dear. 
you know. <laughs> so, you know, this, uh, what's his name, Barr or whatever, he could just be talking out of his ass completely. Right. Well, well, what he, did, what he did, what he did, what he did, there were two aspects to this report. One was the Russia thing, uh, in which he found that the, uh, Mueller found that the uh, 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 Trump, campaign. Trump campaign did not collude with the Russians uh, to throw the election. Okay. During the election. D during the election. Could have done it before. When else could they have colluded? Before, before and after. Well, he, he was doing business there. But that's, before. You know. He could have done it before. But anyway. But there was a second part, and the second part was obstruction of justice. And in that particular case, Mueller could not come to a decision and said that while he couldn't come to a decision, that is, does, does not mean that he's exonerating him of of having uh, done that, uh, uh, he that, said he couldn't come to a conclusion. No, so no, so that what it was left to was William Barr to decide whether he was going to throw collusion, uh, throw uh, obstruction of justice charges against the president, uh, and he found. Uh, he decided, well, I'm not going to, because he say, stated in the past, there's no way a president can be found guilty of anything. It's been his Do take on Do you think that Rod Rosenstein uh, is in cahoots with Trump? I, I don't think so after what Trump's done to him for the last couple of years. I think, but... I think he's a Republican, and I think that his thinking is quite like Bill Barr's is, is that the president has rights, and his right is not to get— uh, 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 There's no such thing as obstruction of justice that a president can do. That's, that's William can be Barr. Accused of obstruction. So in other, words, in other words, he's looking at the possibility that there's obstruction of justice and refuses to look at it. And so, okay. therefore, he took him off the hook on that. So just, that, just was bar, that, was bar, that was Barr's determination. Just to put on the record, when, the, when this is all exposed, yeah. and if they clear Trump of any, um, uh, what is it, not the, the collusion, one of the uh, obstruction mm -hmm. uh, charges, uh, will you uh, recognize that and uh, you know, recognize that Trump didn't do anything? It, I, if he's cleared. Well, uh, can I still I'm, recognize that Trump lost by 300 million, or was it 3 million no, votes? He won by many electoral votes. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah, that, that, yeah that, that's kind of saying the dog ate my homework, okay? Um, uh, hey, the, the 3 million illegals that voted in California, <laughs> they don't count. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Oh, 3 million illegals voted. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. the you know when the framers of our constitution created this whole system of which part of it was the electoral vote system they never considered that this was going to be the outcome and, and of having remember those framers were illegal immigrants yeah they you know, were what they, <laughs> yeah. what they considered yeah was that yeah. Uh, all the states would have a say not just three of them yeah but but, but it, you can't have equal st if say stays essays said equal say because, like, for instance, as an example, uh, every state gets at least three electoral votes, two for a senator. That you, you get one for your two senators and then every representative you have. That's how the electoral count is made in that state. Uh, in a place like, I don't know, where is it, South Dakota or something, where they have, like, just three electoral votes— that is split up among a certain amount of the population. When you take the amount that California hasn't split up among the population, their, their vote, their, their people are much stronger than California. You get what I'm saying? In other mm -hmm. words, in California, that, that, uh, that percentage of their electoral vote, uh, it, the, if you were to parse it out among the population, is much smaller than... Yeah. Uh, one person or a group of people that, in in say South Dakota, it's it doesn't work right. It doesn't work right for you. No, it doesn't work right. <laughs> it you know I mean no, it doesn't work right for me because I'm an American and when I uh, when I was growing up, I heard that whoever got the most votes won. That was just how. Not, I, no, wait a minute. Forget about system. it. Well, well, this system's fucked. Well, and it needs to be changed. You would think the system's fucked no matter who it was well, or what it was. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to – hold on. Shut guy. up, Phil. Do you know what I'm trying to say, uh, Josh, about the – about uh, or Jeff? Uh, Jeff just yes. won. Yeah, about, I'm trying to explain it, and I can't exactly explain it, but that – This is the way people understood 
because every year in your life until Trump came up, it was always the guy who not only won the, the public numbers, but he also... Uh, no, there was one other time. No, there was Bush. There was Bush. Bush. I uh, thought there was like three uh, times. McKinley or somebody? Yeah, yeah, but there was Bush. I thought McKinley didn't count. <laughs> he died. When I, was, when I was a teenager, I didn't talk to him. Yeah, you didn't vote for him, but Ali did. Yeah, I, yeah, I voted for McKinley. Right? Oh, fuck you. Uh, well, hello, the, oh, hello, the, Patrick. The, the, the whole system was. I mean, I just think to look at it in perspective that that entire system was born out of you know a major compromise at the convention, be, and the reason why is because the one thing you have to remember about the convention is the entire convention. From the minute that it started, you know, literally until the minute that it ended, was all basically a large state, small state, you know, battle. I mean, it, you know, right. it was constantly large state, small state. So when it finally came down to the election of the one nationwide, you know, representative, the the president of the United States, uh, the the large state, small state battle obviously hadn't gone away, and it wasn't going to go away, and everyone realized it. And, you know, it was the only way they felt like there could be a voice for small states and, and the representative. I mean, the big fear was that, you know, and, and if, if they didn't have the compromise, they felt like every president that we elected was going to be from, you know, uh, Virginia or, you know, New York or, or something along those lines. Now, it turns out that that's what happened anyway. Yeah. So it didn't really work out that well for him because, you know, what, four of our first so many ever presidents were from large states anyway, particularly Virginia. And uh, the second thing about it was, you know, in the large state, small state battle, Madison, one of the principal framers of the Constitution, correctly let everyone know that he felt like when all was said and done that in the union was formed it would not be large state small state battle lines any longer he mm -hmm. felt like the future conflict in this union would be sectional in other words he could foresee free state versus slave state and our conflict was sectional we you know the large states didn't go to war with the small states you know it, it was a sectional issue so you know, he foretold that correctly. So I guess it is fair to say uh, that, you know, I don't bemoan people who feel the way Alex does that, you know, he no longer feels that system is, uh, you know, needed. Right. Um, it was I the technology that. at the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jeff. I, I thought I thought it was Madison who really came up with that, that strategy. And I thought it was brilliant to take, what was it, 12 different states of 13 complete 13 totally different states uh, from size from uh, area you know for relationship I mean you know Rhode Island is still in there it's like how many yeah. people were in well, and maybe that time? made maybe that made a lot of sense when you didn't have a population of what three hundred million and you didn't have well, uh, a, a that, fifty I states. Think it makes yeah, the same I, sense I, I, now as it did then. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It only makes sense to you now because Trump but won you that still have way. Big states if and if a states. Democrat won that way, you'd be here belly aching that the, that our president wasn't elected by the people. Uh, he just uh, got it by electoral. I never the, belly ached when the guy got two seventy. And and to be I guess historically yeah. uh, correct the the principal broker mm -hmm. of the electoral college was a man named James Wilson who was a delegate from Pennsylvania and had only lived in America for about uh, since 1765. Yeah. Uh, you know he was an immigrant from Scotland and and I know this because I wrote my master's thesis on a guy named James Wilson. Oh. So um, you know, but he he was the he was the principal architect of the compromise. Um, yeah, really, that compromise, though, kept the convention. Uh, it was one of the two or three compromises that kept the convention from breaking up. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it was the best they could do at the time. At I the really time. So it that. was based. But it is a fair conversation. Yeah. See, uh, if they would have uh, just built a wall, then his ass wouldn't have gotten in. Yeah. Up fuck them, those immigrants. <laughs> uh, yes, Patrick. Well, you know, all the Democrats that have won in the past, you haven't heard 
any Republican calling for the elimination of the, uh, you know, the electoral college. So no Democrats ever lost the popular <laughs> vote and still no. won. No, how about Al Gore? There was one. Al was Gore. One, wasn't there? Oh, no. Oh, Al Gore won the popular vote. Oh, oh uh, yeah. There was there was one. The who was the first one? I think it was a Democrat lost the popular vote, but won the electoral college, and then the next two, Bush and Trump. Yeah, the reason why I think it happens now, if you want my opinion, is because of the gerrymandering by the Republicans yeah. in a lot of these states that gerrymandered the congressional districts, and therefore changed the nature of the electoral vote. Uh, that they're still coming from. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, if you've only got one or, or three votes, well, how it, much can you gerrymander? Okay, here, here, there are a handful of states that actually uh, uh, determine the, the the election, and one mm -hmm. of them is, for instance, Ohio. But oh. you compare it to the rest of the country. I mean, so what? We forget about the people in California, who certainly, <laughs> you know, like who who uh, <laughs> amazing amount of people live there, and I don't know how many live in here in New York. I think California is the most populous state, if I'm not mistaken. By well, far. They'll, yeah. they'll still get more representatives. Now they'll, they'll get more. Saying, re they'll get more you know, representatives, but if you gerrymander just right, they won't be Democrats. And the Republicans played the gerrymandering game. The Democrats didn't, and the Democrats were stupid not to do it. Yes, uh, Tony. Do you think maybe they're giving too many votes, uh, electoral votes, to California? Maybe. No. No. If you maybe? were if you were to do it by if you were to do it by percent by by a percentage of the population, you know, like for every. 100,000 people, there's one electoral vote. Let's just say that for argument. Okay. California would way have something like, I think they said if they based it upon a certain dynamic, that California would have something like 250 electoral yeah. votes, not just 89 or 80 so that would or allow 70. Them to control the entire uh, process. No, because a lot of other states would also have more. But, more, yeah. you know, but, uh, but, but uh, you know, the from high a, population states. You, you would like something where if you're going to have an electoral college, that it pretty much mirrors the way the population has voted. And there are some states now that are asking that their electoral votes, no matter what, all go to the person who got the most popular vote in the United States. And see, and that's the thing with the gerrymandering that, you know, they'll, they'll talk about Ohio being a deciding state, but then in Michigan, every time there's a, a presidential election, they always talk about Macomb County. That's where I live. And you'll see them on CNN. You'll see them on Fox News. What's Macomb County going to do? Why is one county in the state of Michigan, which Macomb County, yeah, it's a blue collar, you know, county, usually half the time votes Republican. How did they have so much power? One county in Michigan. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if, if, you know, if you, if, I, I think that this new idea that, that you know the states can determine what they're going to do about the electoral votes, uh, and their their idea is that they just say that whoever uh, uh, got the majority of the popular vote is the way that state will vote when it goes to the uh, electoral college in in January, I think it's January 5th or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Josh. Oh, uh, I didn't hear the last part. The, Skype the, the Electoral I College, I think they meet like on G January 5th or something like oh, that. I think it's December. Uh, you know, I can't remember the day that they typically meet. I, I do think it's in December. Oh, okay. D you know, December 20th, they, you know, maybe? The inauguration, because yeah. Congress, Congress usually seats uh, few, what, like two weeks before two, three weeks before the inauguration, which is always the 20th of January. So yeah. I, I do think it's somewhere in December. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, there are some people who, you know, might say you could have an argument to balance out, you know, such as why does a state like California or New York or whoever, you know, get so many electoral votes and the, the small states only get a few. But, you know, there was some argument that, you know, maybe they deserve it because not only do the most people live there, obviously, but they also – they pay the most money to support the federal yeah. government. You know, they pay to pave the roads in North Dakota and South Dakota and, and yeah. Nebraska and, and et cetera, et cetera. And so maybe they should have, you know, uh, some more say. I mean, 
I guess America is founded on, you know, everyone being equal and everything. So I, I guess I'm just putting it out there as kind of these are some of the counter arguments. Yeah, but what would that, be you know, what would be so wrong? Maybe not such a travesty yeah. that they but, do have. What as would be so do. wrong with doing away with the electoral college at this point in history and just basing it on who gets the most votes wins? You know, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think if anything puts a balance, it makes the balance wrong, it's the Electoral College now. And, you know, after all, I, I, I really hate the fact that people go, they treat the Constitution like it's this holy, this holy document that has is, is, is got to be 100% right. And I'm thinking, they wrote this fucking thing how many years ago? And it was written... Uh, for the zeitgeist, for the tempo of the times. And, you know, some of the older articles of the Constitution do bear looking at again. Yes, uh, Charlie. Like freedom uh, of the press. You know, we have this, this idea that all men are created equal, but that's not true when voting for president because of the Electoral College. One vote in South Dakota balances out was it 15 or 20 votes in California because of the way the representation is? California does not get a proportional, proportionally greater a number of uh, the, electoral the, votes. The electoral votes, are, the, the, the electoral votes are not proportionate right. to its so population. All, votes are not equal. Yeah, it's not. It, 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 it's way out of proportion to say a state that only has three electoral votes uh, and uh, is a small state, but because of that, it, it proportionately, per person, per, per hundreds of thousands of people or whatever you want to use as the, as the, um, um, as the yardstick, um, it, it, it the, a small state like that has actually more voting power than California does per person. So, is that right? No, it's not right. You know, move. what do you mean move, Phil? Yeah, you want more voting power? You know, go to Rhode Island. I don't want to go to Rhode Island. I, uh, 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 um, uh, Jeff's happy up to, up near there. You're in what, Connecticut, right? Hey, yeah. uh, um, Josh, talking about the Constitution, there was a signer of the Constitution that always kind of intrigued me. Uh, his name was Button Gwinnett, and this was the only document, to my knowledge, that he had signed and the only time he ever appeared in, in history. Uh, are you familiar with that? Uh, not really, no, in detail. I mean... Uh, you know, of the <clears throat> what fifty-five men or whatever you know who attended the convention. I mean, there some of them were pretty obscure people. I mean, there they he's not you know there's not just one guy. It was a mystery. There were, I mean, there were probably only about I don't know, let's say seven or eight really prominent people that were you know delegates at the convention and w later went on to you know, pretty heavy careers. I think, you know, a lot of them continue to serve in government more than just those seven or eight, but only only maybe six or eight guys were well, you know, prominent. Well, a, a good example would be Alexander Hamilton, who uh, right. uh, who who made a big on Broadway. Uh, right. You know. <laughs> I didn't see it. I mean, and, and then, I mean... Wasn't and, he and shot the most by Andrew Dice Clay? Yeah, he was shot by Andrew Dice and the Clay. And most, the most prominent of, of, of all delegates was Washington, and Washington did basically nothing at the convention other than sit in a chair, and, you know, and with a stern look on his face. And, you know, he only spoke, uh, what, I think twice. And one of those was to scold someone for uh, letting their notes, you know, drop on the well, floor. Well, he, was setting, he was setting he was setting the tone for Clarence yeah. Thomas. I mean, w Washington was at the convention. I'll, solely I'll do that joke again. He was, set, he was setting the tone for Clarence Thomas by not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, okay, exactly. good. I finally got yeah. the joke. I mean, yeah. I mean, he was he was there to set the tone so that the the people would accept the result of the of the convention. I mean, you know, basically. Yeah. I mean, he gave it he gave it the credibility that it needed to succeed. Is I mean, it true? Washington is it true what not, I is it true what know, I heard? Ended. Is it true what I heard though? That they didn't want to make Washington president; they wanted to make him king. Well, that's what they no, knew. I, 
Yeah, no, uh, I, I don't. And, I don't and then it was so. Washington, and it was Washington who said, "I don't want to be king. We've had enough trouble with that already." I think the person who heads this country should be the president. No, yeah. I, I, I think that would be more, you know, uh, fiction than fact. Well, then, uh, how did they come up with the idea of a president? Because I don't know if anywhere in in the Western world there was this, there, there were things like presidents of com- of countries. There were usually kings or queens, and that was about sure. it. Sure. Yeah, there there were really not. I mean, um, you know, very many examples of that in history, which is why you know our formation of government was you know thought of basically as an experiment because you know it, it really was, but. I mean, the the model was based on, you know, basically created mostly by Matt Madison, although he gets uh, overcredited for a lot of it. But, you know, I mean, it was based on a mm-hmm. study that he basically did where he pretty much studied all the past governments of the world that he could find information on before he went to the convention for months and months. And he kind of sorted out in his mind the parts of, what he thought worked best in other places and what he felt like didn't, you know, I, why I, governments rose and fell. I think, what right, I right, hold, on say, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Kevin, are you, I heard something beeping there. Are you turning your machine up and down? I, uh, Kevin, can you hear me? His goose is cooked. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. uh, I hear I hear beeping coming from your end. Are you adjusting the, uh, the pain? Yeah, charging. Oh, oh, you're charging it. Yeah, I got to charge. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, Just use a Mastercard. Well. Yeah, we're getting we're getting closer to RoboCop Don't than we ever it. knew. You know. So Josh, uh, what Alex I think was asking was <laughs> there was is. there other governments around the world that had a president at that time i don't really think that you would they would have called it a president no i there are, were a few governments that maybe had a figurehead at the top like that but but not not really um what we would consider basically what we have now i, I mean the the and the main thing about the presidency is the presidency basically evolved uh I mean, if man was created in the image of God, then the presidency was created in the image of Washington. I mean, is the best way that I know how to say it. Because when they wrote the Constitution, obviously Washington was in the room. And there was not a single person in the room who didn't realize that not only was he in the room, but that he was going to be the first president of the United States. I mean, everyone knew that Washington was going to be the president. Now, by the way, he I mean, was never, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he was never voted by the people to be president of the United States. He was voted by the Continental Congress. Well, uh, well, now, I mean, he, he won an election of the first electoral college, but, you know, and it was a somewhat of a, a popular vote like we have now, but the voting rights were, were pretty well restricted. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we didn't have quite the, well, we didn't have near the... Uh, What's the word they use for it? Uh, uh, you know, landowners. Like as many people. It? Yeah, I mean, th- yeah, there were a lot of you know restrictions. Uh, but I mean, he, he was elected under the same system that you know that we use now. Um, the the difference being that not uh, nearly as many people were franch enfranchised, you know, yeah. to to vote. But I mean. The presidency was created in his image and, and has evolved for that. I mean, we still have historic, or we still have presidents, not presidents, precedents today mm-hmm. that we use uh, because Washington did. I mean, you know, in other words, the first time an argument came up about whether or not a president could fire a member of his cabinet mm-hmm. uh, on his own, you know, at his will. Um, you know, the answer was, of course he can. And, and when some people asked, well, well, how do you know that? The answer was, well, because Washington did it and nobody said anything that you couldn't at the time, you know. Mm-hmm. And if it was good enough for Washington, then by God, it's good enough for some of these other bums, you right. know, we've had. So I mean, H- Hold on a second. We're being joined by Brian Neary. And Brian, uh, 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 yes, uh, if you can, yeah, try and turn on your camera and see what happens. It's, apparently, yeah. it's, not, it's not wanting to you kick know. in. What? There we go. Well, uh, okay. anyway, uh, what were you going to say, Jeff? I wanted to say something. Yeah, um, one of the things is uh, my my granddaughter and and my wife and my and my daughter are going to Washington D.C. Uh, next week, mm-hmm. and uh, they're, they're learning about a lot of the things we're talking about. And one of the things they're going to go is see Washington's house. Oh, in Washington, uh, from what I understand. 
did not become a rich guy. He didn't make a lot of money. You know why? Because there were no restaurants. And so people used to come over to his house to see him, and he had to provide food for everybody. (laughs) Sponges is coming over. You know why he didn't make a lot of money? He wasn't a Democrat in government. And he was an honest president. That's why he wasn't taking no kickbacks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Chop yeah. down the cherry tree. Don't yeah. believe that. He, he wasn't trying to build hotels in Russia. Yeah. Uh, put his name on everything. Yeah, put it his was because of inflation. Yeah. By the way, a lot of people <laughs> took their names. Was I halfway uh, I, I, a lot of people down in uh, what, it was, what was at one time called Trump City uh, uh, literally sued their buildings and have had the name Trump taken off their buildings. Because they felt it lowered the property values, and since they were co-ops and they bought into them, they didn't want the property value going down because Trump's yep. name was on the building. Well, didn't they have a contract? Hold on a second, Brian. You pay? seem to be having a problem um, uh, signing in. Uh, you know, getting your camera going. What? 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 What's the problem there, Brian? Can you tell me? No, I don't know. Oh, can you hear me? No, but yeah. I can hear you. We can hear you fine. It's just the the camera just keeps whirling around and whirling around and whirling around. Yeah, I, wonder and I don't. A, I, I don't wonder see if it's a, my picture on here either. So, okay. do you want me to try something? Is it gray I, it, I'll out tell you. Hang up. I can, hang up. Reboot your Scroll computer. Your down around reboot your icons. computer and try it yeah. again. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. You know, Alex. One day I'll get it right the first time. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm Brian, just wondering if his camera problems. is grayed out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, how. Sometimes you in hit the, the past, microphone and you only call a voice call. Oh, right. But in the past, we've had situations where the, like, the ninth and tenth caller couldn't get a. Uh, uh, Sometimes a video. that happens. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. Uh, but uh, other times it doesn't. So, you know. Uh, yeah, but what I was saying before. It, uh, he called though. You know, you guys were talking about. You know, Jeff was joking. I mean, you know, honestly, a lot of our framers um, died in in pretty under pretty bad circumstances. I mean, a lot of them went broke. I mean, they were pretty prone to land speculation and uh, high risk investments. Um, uh, that's why I've always said that. You know, on here many times before. You know, the more things have changed, the more they've stayed the same. I mean, they were just as greedy and just as stupid as we are now. I mean. <laughs> You know, they weren't these fucking holy men, you know, these demigods from, you know, the the great beyond. I mean, you well, know, that's what I, I, I mean, rich the, people who didn't want to pay their taxes. Right. I mean, you know, uh, as I said before, James Wilson, the delegate I mentioned earlier that I wrote my master's thesis on, I mean, he was a sitting associate justice of the United States Supreme Court uh, at the same exact time he was in uh, uh, jail for, he was in debtor's prison because he couldn't pay his debts. I mean, they jailed a sitting associate justice of the Supreme Court because he was so far in debt. And when he died, he was on the run from the law uh, for it was going to be picked up, basically, and jailed for a second time in debtor's prison and uh, caught malaria in North Carolina on the run and uh, died, you know, without a penny to his name. (laughs) I thought that debtor's prison wasn't was it was eliminated in this country, that it was something that they had in England. But. Uh, no, no, no. They had debtors prison here. Uh, I don't know yeah. when it was eliminated, but it, yeah, it was, was eliminated in like 1905. It was oh. active certainly in the late 1780s and 90s for sure, because mm. uh, several of our uh, founders were, you know, in trouble with that. I mean, Wilson was the most prominent to actually. I mean, an associate justice. I mean, can you imagine an associate justice now, basically allowed to continue doing some of his work from a jail cell? I mean, yeah. which is kind of how it went. <laughs> You know, I mean, and, and back then the the associate justices used to what they call ride circuit, where they went out and handled cases in their districts, mm-hmm. and oversaw some of the lower judiciary, and uh, he basically was out riding circuit and was uh, got word that there was a, a writ, you know, for his arrest for debtor's prison, and he'd already been in once, so the second time he just kind of yeah. was on the was way. Was he divorced? No, he was married. By the way, Brian, so I, Brian, let me just speak to Brian a second. You're still whirling yeah. around. It, it, apparently, maybe it has something to do with the fact that we have uh, nine, ten. nine pe- so ten, many people. On. Ten yeah. people. Do we have ten people here? Yeah, ten people with yeah, me. Yeah. And that it might be making it hard for you to to get your camera on. So just stop with the camera, so it's not whirling. Let's see that beautiful picture of your kid. You know. Well, when you called- <laughs> When you called, did you hit the microphone or did you hit the camera? No, he he, he obviously hit the camera because he hit uh, the camera. 
Yeah. You hit okay. the you hit the camera okay. to initiate the call, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, no, it, that's it was whirling around, which means it was trying to go to the camera, but he was having some kind of problem. Maybe if there was one less person here, he'd be able to get on. But yeah. the, the, we that's uh, anytime you want to say something, Brian, just yell out Brian, and we'll recognize you. Okay? Can I ask a question? Did you go in through the uh, Gabnet's uh, button? For Skype, yeah. or did uh, oh, why don't you try it on a clean Skype connection, uh, where you open up Skype, close the uh, browser, and then uh, click Go to on connections. Uh, okay. Click, click on your you know, contacts and get and, uh, and get a fresh GabNet contact, and then open okay. it up. Yeah, try. Well, see, if he'd said all that with an Indian accent, that would have been fun. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure I would have had to ask if he had plugged in his computer. Yeah. Sure okay. Uh, okay. So let me let me hang up on you. Let me let me hang up on you and tr give that a try. I doubt if that will work, but you know, Phil thinks seems to think he's IT around here. So I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay. If, if you're okay, I'm fine. Okay, just call back in and try it that way. Okay. Yeah. Right. First, We're interested. In Twenty five you know, cents. Well, well I, I don't really. And Brian, if you'll give me your credit card, I will uh, help you with this <laughs> IT uh, issue. We are from Microsoft, and we're, we're down, here to help. And, uh, hey, oh, we're, 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 we're from Windows. Phil, you speak English too. It's easy to understand. Just uh, tell me your IP address. No, I'm from New York. I don't speak English. <laughs> tell I'm me sure. your IP, IP address. Sure. Give me a Slurpee and a hot dog. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Jeff. Jeff is, uh, yes, Jeff. For, for for my uh, my wife's uh, grandmother used to always say, "Speak United States." <laughs> <laughs> Speak United <laughs> States. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I just you know I just think that uh, that uh, uh, we really need to relook at the Constitution. I think that it's so old and creaky that it needs some some looking after. Um, See, I'm almost afraid if they do the way that the America is right now, what yeah. they might turn us into. Yeah, you, you got a point. Nazi there. Germany might look like it was like paradise. <laughs> okay, so yeah. now now Brian has been uh, is, is is on, and now he, click on your camera there, Brian, and let's see if you come in. See, Phil was wrong. Drink. drink. Everybody drink. Everybody have a drink. Just wasted our goddamn time. Uh, turn, turn your camera off, Brian, and when you have something you want to say, just yell out at the top of your voice, Brian, and we'll recognize you, okay? That's fine. Great, okay. thanks. Yeah. Anything you want to add, by the way, Brian, to what we've been talking about? Uh, no, no, no. Not right now. Not right now. I was oh. just so worried I was going to click on one of the old calls and <laughs> yell that again. No, no, don't, don't, don't worry about it. You're doing just <laughs> fine, Brian. And probably if there was one less person here, you might actually... Hey, you Alex, do you might want actually me to try to hang yeah, up and I'll see if this picture off. comes Let's in and then I'll call back? Um... um uh, 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 That's a good little test. Nah, nah, nah. It was my idea. I'll drop off. No, no. Just let, let's just talk here. Let's keep the show going. We're not. We're doing. We're not doing a technical test of the, uh, of the emergency the broadcast network. system here. Go ahead. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, he, but. The, but you know, I mean, I'm just saying that I, you know that I I just find that we we've, we've got a uh, how many years have we been around now? We're we're not 200 years, but we're that's over 200. It's over 40. 200. It's well over yes. 200. Yes. Yes. Getting up around yeah. 250. 230 something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and it, that Constitution was written at a time where the whole world was different. And I agree with you, Jason. That maybe at, at this point we don't want to see them rewrite it because. Americans are so fucking idiotic now. They'll like, you know, writing clauses, making Facebook a flag or something, you know. Uh, it's people like you wanting to destroy it that they have to worry about. Enough with that, you know, Phil. Enough with that. It's running a bit, a bit so thin. So it, it was funny today. I ran into this lady. She was from Canada. Yeah. And obviously she was an immigrant to Canada, too. But she was looking for, a, a, I think it's just called Burlington now, but it used to be Burlington Coat Factory. So she came over to Michigan to go shopping there, and she couldn't find it. 
And I'm, I was telling her, I'm like, oh, you're from Canada? If I got was able to get into Canada, I'd have no reason to come back to the United States. And she started laughing and be like, why? I'm like, you know, you watch the news? And she just started laughing even more. And yeah. <laughs> Didn't you tell her that Burlington Coat Factory is in Vermont? Yeah. <laughs> it is. I go to Burlington once a year, actually. Yep, don't yeah, and they wouldn't have the fair electoral votes that uh, that uh, California does, you, you'd be condemning them to uh, uh, mediocrity. What? What? What do you say, Vermont? Phil? You know how many how many uh, electoral college votes does Vermont have? I don't know. They've got at Probably least they three. got at least three. One. Well, they've got well, they got three. Well, they got, they got three. three. Yeah, so they got three electoral votes. Three total together. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. uh, but split up among what ki what size population, then take whatever California has and split it up among that population. And you will see that the votes per hundred thousand are far greater in Vermont than they are in California. Yeah. Well, that's you know what I was trying. To that's what I was the point I was trying to make earlier. And I couldn't get it right in my mind, but I just got it right. Well, you're welcome. Y yes, I Jeff. <laughs> Brian. The only state in the United States that I never went to is North Dakota. And this is a good question. Much. Why would you want to go to North Dakota? Why? Well, yeah, my question. Does it exactly exist? Does anyone live there? Well, to begin with, to begin <laughs> with, water, my question, and this has been a question that's been asked many know. times, both those states have such a small population. Why didn't they just make it Dakota? That's right. right. Why did they decide they were going to split up the, uh, the the Dakotas into North and South Dakota? It just because makes no. Because it would have been the name of a nation that was already there. It makes no sense at all. You know, hey, Alex. Yes, it's all hey, cold as shit. Yes, are there Brian. any are there any other countries or anything that does something like this, like that we do? I mean, I mean, I know there are different, you know, obviously different countries that are, you know govern differently but are there any other countries in the world that, that have some kind of stupid electoral vote like this what you mean like uh um, republics do yeah, all republics have an electoral that, college well i mean most i mean most are the most votes win right uh, well most countries don't allow you to vote they just shoot you yeah. <laughs> By the way, you really have a bad attitude about what other countries are like. Believe me, most a lot of them are much more civilized than we are, Phil. Yeah, kind of like Venezuela. By the way, I was just thinking, you know, this Donald Trump thing where he talked about the outrageous Jussie Smollett case. I just found that the two cases this weekend that were most prominent was his case with Mueller and the Jussie Smollett case, and they both had a lot in common. Mueller was an investigation, not a case. Well, all I'm saying is, is that uh, uh, he got off the hook, and so did Jesse. And Mueller was charged. I mean, uh, Jesse Smollett was charged with 16 counts. Yes, but then the charges were dismissed, so there are no charges. Yeah, because of uh, all collusion. I'm saying is that two people got away with something this weekend. I think that's wonderful. Uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah, I wanted to. Say bring that up um because it 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 sticks in my car when the president tried to get involved with a private citizen yeah because i just saw in the news it ran across to uh chiron that mm -hmm. um trump is going to have the uh fbi and the department of justice look into the smoke case and I think that that's bullshit. It's not his. It's not his place to do. It. Right. Uh, but is he having them look into it, or is he? I think they already are. They, they, they already. Are he, they already it. are looking into it. But he kind of tries to make it look like he said, "Go get him." Yeah. And he did. Well, uh, they were looking into it far before he ever did this tweet. Could what happened in Chicago be considered uh, some sort of corruption? It, no, where, it seems like it. Yeah, I don't know if it's corruption. Um, it 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 certainly is another case that lately we seem to be very pissed with people who are privileged getting away with shit. Okay, uh, the whole school thing with uh, with movie stars and and CEOs sending their kids to college uh, on fake pre false premises. 
Uh, and, and this is another case of, of wealthy being privileged and being able to get away with something. Yeah, but I think this one is so much worse than paying off to get your kid into a school. Uh, oh, well, the I, school I, thing, I, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the guy from Yale, the coach, pled guilty today uh, for uh, trying to take $450,000 bribe. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Did he, did so, yeah, but the, the first guilty plea. Okay. Hmm? The smaller thing was handled like shit, though. Yeah. I mean, when you when you got the 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 Chicago Police Department first day going up there and preaching to the choir, he shouldn't have made that big old speech. Yeah, right that off speech the bat. was bad. It was a bad idea. Uh, yeah, it was a bad idea. He might have been what he thought, but he shouldn't have done that. Yeah. As, as you know, the cop, uh, they should have just said, "We got him. We're going to investigate it. That's it." Yeah. And then the rest of them should have just shut up and let them do their jobs, and it probably wouldn't have been such a big deal. Yes, yeah, so Patrick has his hand up. A... Patrick has his hand up. Uh, and, okay, so after I heard about Trump dealing with, you know, I, I, apparently I misread it then. So, um, so if they're already investigating, that's fine. I just saw his name associated with it and thought, shut the fuck up. It, it's a private citizen matter. But he did something good also today, so it washed it out for me. Yeah. He went against Betsy DeVos. Yes, yeah, so I was going to bring that up. And yeah. And it's a fun to Special Olympics. So I thought that was at least a good gesture on his part that, you know, whether or not it, it was him. Or somebody else jabbing him, saying, "Don't be an asshole on this." Uh, it was a good thing. What, what? Why should we waste American dollars on watching cripples throw a ball? I, because they can. <laughs> because Jason, uh, as somebody, as somebody who has a who Did has Trump a plaque, as somebody who has a plaque, yeah, he overrode uh, at, at, uh, DeVos. I was talking, he Phil. Did, did he? Oh. As somebody who was given a plaque, as a citation for working for the Special Olympics. Uh, um, I, I think it's a wonderful organization. I think it's a wonderful thing. And I think the idea of, of doing away with the funding to uh, the Special Olympics was a particularly odorous kind of thing to do, you know. But, but it goes right you know, along it, with everything sorry, else this fucking administration that, does. What? They wanted it. They were trying to eliminate, I think it was seven billion dollars from education in the United States, period. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that's I'm still, sorry, and that's still, and that might be a, a and, tearjerker, heartache type of thing by eliminating seven billion dollars from education in the United States. Period. That's well, a lot of it ridiculous. Was yeah, and 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 Betsy did want to increase sixteen billion dollars to private schools. Yes, because private, mm. but private schools suck. It's oh, a terrible that's, idea. They do. Yeah, that's her pet. That's her pet. Yeah, she probably yeah. has money in it somewhere. Yes, Patrick. She does. Well, I, maybe Wisconsin, particularly my area, southeastern Wisconsin, is different than the rest of the fucking country. But we have so many referendums that have passed for the local school district for various things that the, the taxpayers are hemorrhaging money into the school district. So I don't, when I see cutting education uh nationally mm -hmm. it doesn't do anything for me because i look at all the taxes we pay here in wisconsin for all of the public schools and that do the various referendum to improve uh buildings or different programs and oh. i don't know if the rest of the nation they don't do their own local or not, so we sure as hell do here and well it, no it, it, no no uh, everybody who lives anywhere uh, pays uh, pays taxes for schools. Uh, oh, we got bonds. property Patrick, taxes. You're, you're paying that because the federal government isn't willing to pay that to your right. schools. Exactly. Well, we I mean, bonds. what they're trying to do, what they're is trying the to do, what they're trying to do is they're trying to squeeze out the public. Yes, it is. Hold on a second. What they're trying to do is squeeze out the uh, public schools in favor of the private schools for and profit schools. for profit schools. Yeah. And, and that is a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, we should be doing everything we can to maintain a free education in this country and not in a nonprofit school system. And I don't think anybody 
who has a profit-making school system should in any way get federal assistance. Okay? My, my thoughts. Anyway. Um, well, I, I don't think any of this stuff's important. Nicholas Cage has just filed for annulment four days after marrying his girlfriend. You know? This is this is what's important. Today. What what hour did he figure he sh it was a bad marriage? <laughs> I mean, come on, you he know. married his makeup it's artist or a makeup changed. artist, huh? It's probably wasted. Well, isn't he the he one that married uh, married um, Lisa Marie Presley? Uh, yeah, that lasted a few months. Yeah, is he still living in Vegas? Uh, yeah. Does he live in Vegas, movie? or was that just a movie he made, Tony? I, know, I think he, he lived, a guy who <laughs> signs comic books for me, I'm not going to drop a store's name, they say that he has a, I don't want to say, like he has a major drinking problem. He lives in Vegas, I'm almost bought. He did a signing out there, I know that, I can ask the guy. Well, he, he did a movie, he it's funny, it's funny, down. it's he funny. He married his girlfriend in Las Vegas, but a lot of people Yeah, I think he lives Vegas. there. I think if that's the case, Tony, it's art imitating life, because yeah, in, mean, leaving Las, in leaving so. Las Vegas, he played someone who mm -hmm. went to Vegas to drink himself to death. I mean, I'm not saying I don't know anything, but from what I, what he told me, this guy he gets a lot of private signings with comic artists and actors, and he says like he's he's not he's he's in and out of money a lot. It sounds like. Well, that's what he told me, and he's pretty viable, the guy. He's never had a you know what I consider a really successful career. Somehow we no, all. He was always like always like Coppola's nephew. I always thought he I always mean, he made no. He made a lot of bad movie decisions. Yeah. You know what happens is yes, you can do the stupid dumb movies for the for a, for a big uh, payday, Paycheck. but you in between those have to do a really good movie for almost absolutely nothing, so people know you have your chops as an actor, and that what shit and you balance in? them. But you, know you know Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer too, Lawrence man. went out and did all those wacko uh, movies. You know those adventure movies and so on. X Men and what was the other one? The uh, the uh, Hunger uh, Games. Uh, Hunger Games and so on. But then she turned around around and would do something really good and really took a great acting ability to do so that she maintained a certain equilibrium and um you know he's been in a lot of movies i, mean, I, long, long. I know the guy I ask him who he's, he's been in a lot of that. shitty movies oh. phil oh. you know uh, he wanted more. to play superman the rumor was in the comic industry he kept trying to how can he be superman for christ's sake i sent him myself would you cast him as Superman? Well, they, you know, they you know who they wanted before uh, before uh, Reeves took the job. Uh, uh, Robert Tarzan. Robert What's Redford. No, Robert Redford. Can you imagine <laughs> Robert Redford as Superman? Yeah. Oh my god, that would be terrible. Uh, also, also the best one, the one I really liked was when yeah. they, when they made Casablanca. You know who the first Rick was before they changed right. it to Bogart? Ronald Reagan. Oh, oh my Jesus! God. He was a terrible actor. Yeah, really? yeah. I, who was but it? But they was wouldn't it, bring on it, the it, chimpanzee. Durst had said, uh, <laughs> so he didn't take it. Like really? Well, they would have put. <laughs> you know, he, <laughs> and, and I, I think it was Durst who said, "Yeah, but then it'd be a really shitty movie." You know, was, nobody would remember. He, I was Casablanca. watching all the movies. He used to do the introductions to General Electric Theater. I was watching all. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Those, yeah. He used to introduce well, the movies. Well, that's uh, that's how he kept himself alive until he decided that's, to go into politics. In fact, that's uh, what uh, got that's, that's what kind of got him into politics. Yeah, that, he used, he used to go back out. Back. He used to go out to General Electric meetings and give yeah. a pep talk speech. And that pep talk speech became his major speech that he used in his campaign when he ran for president. It was kind of his place to do a rehearsal for running for office. So he was a he comedy was a fluffer? Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I can get those washing machines. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's like, I used to watch the, he used to do this because all the young actors were in it and he used to introduce them. Like, yeah. you know, who was going to be in the show tonight and whatever it was. Yeah. I would have liked to have been around to get the motel receipts from uh, uh, from from Ronald Reagan for the motels that he rented out during making of uh, what is it Wildcats of the Navy? What was the movie he was in with Nancy Davis that he met her? Oh God! <laughs> yeah, and they used to supposedly go to a motel during a break and uh, go fuck. <laughs> if you can imagine <laughs> thing. fucking that skank. Yeah. yeah. Well, to, get, to get away from <laughs> disparaging like dead presidents, uh, he was a terrible president. You know the Purdue family that uh, owns the company that makes OxyContin. 
Uh, Oxy uh, Carton? Uh, yeah, Oxy Carton. That's I think that's uh, Barbara Carton. Uh, well, she's an author, no, isn't she? Uh, it's the same Purdue. company. I think they Salmer, make chicken. Uh, Oxy Carton, Phil. Well, no, I don't take the No, shit, they don't. But, no, they're not the people that make chicken. Uh, uh, New York is suing them. Uh, yes. The family. Yes. It looks like Purdue may well go into bankruptcy because they're being sued by so many people. As hey, a so the, the other day you guys are talking about on one of your shows about the advertisement that you don't see the advertisement out there like you did with the cigarette companies back in the 50s and blah, blah, blah. You don't see it, but your doctors do because you're at the same time you're talking about the hot chicks going into the doctor's office. That's what they're spending their money on yep. trying to push their oxygen. No, well, actually, that, they, they're not doing that as much anymore. Okay, they're not anymore. But when they're all not this doing shit that. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. They're not doing that as much anymore. But the thing is that uh, the reason they run all these ads on TV is because you then see an ad for something that might make you feel better. And when you go to your doctor next time, you're going to say, "Hey, why don't you give me that blah 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 that takes care of blah blah blah." And, but that and, was the point. I think it was Josh who was saying that he doesn't see, you don't see the commercials. There are not commercials for Oxycontin. They don't have commercials for pain pills. But that's where they're they're not spending the money on TV to get you to ask for it. Yeah. They're spending the money in the doctor's office with these little hot chicks with their little tiny micro mini scoops. Well, that was years ago when I said, well, to... that was years ago when I sat in the office and they had those women going in there. I don't know if they still do. I don't know if that has. Yeah, hasn't they been, still do. They still do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah they still. So, you know, so we haven't gotten to the point where we frown upon that, huh? Hey, there's another one here that's interesting. Uh, uh, Alex, this is a way for you to make money. Uh, the, the DEA needs contractors who can burn a thousand pounds of weed an hour. So <laughs> I can do that, man. <laughs> just, just, just hand it to my wife. You know, she can take care of it for yeah, she, well, you. Know, they ought to pay her for what she's doing. Yeah. yeah. Why do they want to burn the? Why do they want to burn the weed? I can't. Uh, uh, says, uh, DEA has put up uh, their help wanted signs, uh, <clears throat> uh, but. Um, uh, they uh, they need people that can uh, destroy a thousand pounds of marijuana an hour. Why? That's a crime. Uh, yeah, evidence labs probably they got all uh, the evidence and stuff that they seize from people and they need to destroy it. You know the, yes. they they fight like There's crazy. There's no meaning to the the, the, the burn. Day, they right? fight. Yeah, they, 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 they fight they like they, they fight like local crazy. Local citizens' yeah. willingness to offer their help. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the DEA is uh, is coke. is really sweating the legalization of marijuana and the way it's encroached closely onto every state in the United States. Because what it's going to do is it's going to put some of them out of a job. Yeah, it's because they they're they're seizing a tremendous amount of illegal drugs. Well, Plus but, but they, 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 they can seize it all they want to. There's going to be a day when those drugs just aren't going to be illegal, and you can't call them that. Well, it's it depends on how they come in. They're not grown legally where they're taxed. Well, no, so uh, they're uh, going to destroy uh, them uh, just uh, like uh, they'll destroy cigarettes. That well, people are would, smuggled. people would rather grow all the stuff in these states because, uh, but their states still isn't legal like that. So people aren't growing them privately, you know, in like private New companies York. like New York, which is about ready, from what I understand, to pass a law saying smoke them if you got them, you know. Uh, they need to get rid of the treaty about le the illegality of marijuana yeah. so then they can actually do trade between countries too because you know a lot of the crime coming from mexico is when we basically cut them off of corn and our farm industries with nafta was it went in to flood their corn markets and then they started going to drugs and then you know that's what ended up happening there if you could actually legalize the drug market down there and just become a regular legal commodity that's traded with the united states well most so. of the most of the drugs that come across the border is pot it is not the heroin now, or anything else it's it pot yeah uh and uh i the best way to uh uh, to stop that trade is to legalize it and let them send it over and uh, tar put tariffs on it and everything else, you know, make it legal. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why we keep fighting this legalization of marijuana. I mean, 
for years. It's been stupid for so many years that we've done this. You know, it's yeah, a harm, I think the Mexican it's a harmless, innocuous. With the cartels and it's a harmless, innocuous drug, right, yeah. Patrick? I've it's never the gateway to aspirin. You, I don't give <laughs> you, you never smoked it, so you don't give a shit. But it, you know, yeah, I agree with Phil. You ever been robbed by anybody <laughs> high on marijuana? I've I've never smoked marijuana. I've never smoked a cigarette. I've you, you need I've that. taken were the one given to me to a, by a doctor for you know surgery and that. I've never had an interest in any. Right, see, that's why you have a negative outlook on drugs, Patrick, because you were given the legal ones. I yeah. didn't. I didn't have a negative outlook. The I don't legal ones are good. If they want to legalize marijuana, go for it. No, but you, you're not interested in drugs at all, right? Because when you were younger, you were given drugs and you didn't like them, right? That's, honest, that, that's a very honest answer. That, that's exactly it. That's why I never got into... But that, that's what I'm saying. You had pharmaceuticals. You didn't have the lightweight marijuana. But it's <laughs> legal in California, and I still don't have any desire. You know, if somebody said to me, you want to you know, you want drink? Yeah, okay. You want to smoke a, a joint? No. You know... Uh, why not, Phil? Um, you know, I don't. I don't smoke cigarettes. No, but it, it's not like smoking cigarettes, Phil. Does it's it not smells? In, it smells terrible. Uh, you it know, smells wonderful, but, Phil. You've been there and like done that, oregano. Phil. Right? I, I, I love the smell of pot, but I hate it when I'm on the street and I smell a car going by and it smells like pot. Yeah, but, it really... but the smell of pot, you know what the smell of pot means to me? A certain kind of camaraderie between people. You know, because you, you pass a joint back and forth, you know, you're discussing stuff, you're getting high, you're making a lame-ass theories about how you're going to solve the problems of the world. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, a waste of time. To Come to Detroit when somebody cuts you off and you smell pot. You <laughs> kind of get a different outlook on it when yeah. somebody's driving. At home, yeah, you know, I I like it. You know, I love the smell of it at home. You yeah, know, if somebody were to come over, but you know, if somebody's driving down the road and you can smell it. And mm -hmm. so I assume I assume it is smoked in your home from time to time. From time to time, it might be. <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> I, yeah. I cannot confirm or deny well, that. The reason Jeff is so quiet every night is he's so high on the pot that, uh, the you pot, know, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Kevin. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just want to see if I switch to an earphone. So. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Well, we're we're slow. We're almost, we got one, about a minute and 20 seconds left before he switched to the, the pot and wanted to make sure you could still hear him. Yeah, yeah. Was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, anyway, so, yeah, 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 so, we live in a strange, we live in strange times, folks, uh, and, uh, they only seem to get stranger. I just, I'm just not that happy with America right now, and I think we've lost our, our way. You know, we've it's lost our, we've, right lo we've lost our moral compass, and I think that's the problem we have right now in the United States. I think States. we finally found our moral compass oh, to, it, in Trump. <laughs> You know, you well, always, hey, Alex, just think of it. We're getting a you, great history get, lesson right now. We're going to see the fall of Rome. You know, you, you may yeah. be you may be right. You may be right because uh, I I don't I don't see any way around this. It, it's only going to get worse and worse. You know, and and I and I don't care if Trump gets thrown out and somebody else gets elected. I think America will make elect the wrong person. Okay, <laughs> I think that's in our DNA now. Unfortunately. You know. Did you hear Biden's youngest son got thrown out of the Navy for uh, coming up positive on a cocaine test? When, oh, gee, why do you bring that up one minute before we have to go to <laughs> well, theme? Well, you'll have it for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, know, you, you figure you do it now so you can get away with it. Uh, you know? That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tomorrow you can tell us about it. Hey, thank you very much, Charlie. Appreciate it. Uh, that's, uh, that's Charlie Wallace right there. Thanks to Jason. Uh, doesn't wear a hockey mask, just uh, just wears a, a smile. Uh, Tony Magno, thank you for being with us tonight, Anthony. Jeff, always nice to have you here. Brian, too bad we couldn't see you tonight, but maybe if you call us tomorrow night early, we'll be able to see you. Sounds you know, good. Uh, yeah, Thanks, yeah, Alex. Uh, 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 Phil, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, 
uh, in spite of the fact that you're full of shit. Uh, uh, Josh Wheeler, <laughs> thank, <you> <laughs> thanks for all the information on everything uh, yeah. historical. Kevin Stopper, it's fun to have you there charging yourself while you're on the show. And there it is. There it is. And, of course, Patrick Blazik. Thank you so much, Patrick. I really appreciate it. And if the rest of you, all of you, would wave at the audience and say goodbye, I will wave back at you. And I will say goodbye to you and say goodnight to our citizen panel. Boy, they were we had a full house here tonight. That's nice. That's like the old days. Yeah, we love the, uh, the, uh, the citizens panel to be a full house. That's... What? That's 10 with me, okay? Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, 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 Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection tomorrow night, 9.30 Eastern Time. It'll be Damian Chaplin with The Exchange, and then I'll be back again tomorrow night, hopefully with Girlfriend, at uh, 10 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And by the way, you know, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>